What is up you guys and of course welcome to another RU Wi-Fi battle versus the Blue Rouge and which are truly the Scarinder. Now this is a very interesting battle because I haven't been playing RU for that much so I decided to um, take what I would say the, the poor man's route in viability and go with uh, well a trick room team and it's formed basically like every other one uh, the energy here is a mental herb uh, trick room set it with stealth rocks mega amphros because it's are you now and that's scary and um, it, it can is actually <laughs> so it's really good in trick room a little executor with trick room the flame or machamp yeah that would get boost very scary porygon 2 trick room setter clearly and of course hoopa with the trick room and i do believe flying to umc so yeah overall this team is um, pretty straightforward you know everything besides machop and amphoro actually carries the trick room so it's a very very scary team overall uh, we're going up against a team that actually could push this team back really good and we see a Durant, which is most likely Bandit or Scarf, um, or it could be Honage with the um, with the C's Honage Claw. Really hope it isn't that. Uh, Nita Queen here which definitely could be Stealth Rock Ruxious, which could potentially, if I'm not behind a uh, Trick Room, sweep me after one Sword Stance. It basically when it kills everything on my team. Snorlax, which is always a threat, and I kind of, while I saw this, I realized that why am I not using Snorlax? It's a tremendous Pokemon for a Trick Room team in RU. Uh, Gligar, very scary, and Ditto most likely can push me back, right? Uh, so yeah, with this in mind, I felt like I'm gonna lead up with Dianchi, really hope that he started with uh, his um, uh, Nido Queen and I can potentially go for Trick Room Stealth Rock and Explode. So with this in mind, let's go into the match. Let's see, I'm doing this like um, kind of live, like I'm narrating directly from the recording, basically to save myself some time. Uh, because, you know, with the baby and whatnot, you know, it kind of taking <laughs> don't have that much chance I can record so anyway he leads up with his Durant and I felt like shit I, I really don't have a switch in here well I could go to Porygon too I'd rather risk it and hope he missed with a hustle of mine he does not and actually Iron will just well KO uh, you know and that is where it is I mean a critical hit nice it's still gonna KO no matter what so I get a cool opportunity here to go to Nimbus my um, Ampharos and I can directly go for potentially a, a Draco or a Dragon Pulse because it felt like it felt dumb to go in for a Volt Switch directly with both Nido Queen and Gligar on the field I'm, I can't Volt Switch freely and I was fully aware of that so Dragon Pulse just felt to be the best play overall Though, it really is unfortunate that this Pokemon do not get the likes of a Draco Meteor, which I definitely would believe would have been more helpful towards this Pokemon. That said, though, we do a big chunk on Nidoqueen, Queen, and while it could get his rocks for free, I can definitely switch out, and my safest switch in here is definitely Genesis or Porygon 2. Um, it can't do anything towards me, I mean, Stealth Rocket Best is what it can do. We got a special attack raise as he go directly for the Earth Power. And that tickles us. I mean, it's basically possibly a free hit KO at best. As he goes to the very safe Stealth Rock, and I will be able to KO actually this Nidoqueen. Queen. So, from the get go here, we are off with one massive threat. Actually, I actually went for Trick Room. How about that? I'm really. Oh, no, never mind that. No, it was three days ago. You know, everything can happen, right? Anyway, he does lose it no matter what. He doesn't switch into Snorlax, which is really good. Uh, Snorlax is clearly a Pokemon that can take these hits fairly alright. As now comes Big John. Uh, that was you said here that rocks are here to say, so I don't have a spinner on the team. Uh, so I'm um, kind of a predicament. Now, with the trick room in mind, I can't necessarily switch out uh, all that much. Rotter Snorlax is a very tremendous threat. So I'm going to bring Gaius uh, basically because I think I am faster or I mean slower during trick room, so I can go for a free knockoff and I can force him out. Close combat, clearly going to KO him as he really felt that himself, and so I felt Gligar is going to come in. Uh, as we get that prediction dead right, and we get the Violate out of the, <laughs> this tremendous annoying Pokemon. But the issue here is, uh, is if I have a facade and not Ice Punch, what that means is a facade is our go-to move, and it doesn't, doesn't KO, sadly. But at the same time, you know, we are bulky-ish. The Flame Roar doesn't take too much damage from us, so we can still keep on at it, basically. And actually, Trick Room will end now, which is really unfortunate. However, we do have Bullet Punch, so we are able to snag the Glider KO. And now I can actually T-Bolt 
and Volt switched freely with my Mega Afro. So Mega Afro is looking really good right now. Actually looking to be a tremendous threat towards my opponents. If I can set up on a Trick Room that is as Fish comes in. And um, yeah, while Knockoff looks really good, I really don't want to risk it. So I'm actually going to bring Hoopa basically sacking it. At this point, there is really nothing I can do as he goes for a very safe uh, Psychic Fangs. And that doesn't do too much towards us. So I could potentially do something else here. But the thing is here, I, you know, I'm, I'm still dying. He goes for Aqua Jet. Uh, Psychic Fang of Basil 2 is killed no matter what. So it didn't necessarily matter. And um, I would have gone for Trick Room there no matter what. And clearly Hoopa was not made for this battle. As I can bring in Nimbus. And I'm going to do the very, very safe play. And that is Volt switching out of here. Um, basically, what this matchup really brings to me is that I can freely go into my Porygon 2 if the Snorlax comes in, which it does. And. Um, what I'm gonna do now is actually just scout out if I'm faster <laughs> outside of Trick Room, basically, uh, or if Snorlax is faster. It definitely can't KO me if anything. So I would say I'm a, I'm, I'm a decent decent spot as, as of now. As uh, we get the download, we get the boost in attack, which feels really really relevant. And um, we are faster. We are fast with recover. And I was I know or I thought at least at the time that Machamp and um, Porygon 2 has the same speed here of 60. So, um, I just felt like, okay, that means that if I'm gonna KO Snorlax, that means that I shouldn't be uh, during a Trick Room to be able to pull that off, as he brings in Fish again, and I went directly for Recovery. Now, here's the thing, I really need Porygon to active and as healthy as it can be, that is, uh, because this is a matchup I potentially can't win, but as full HP, I should be able to do some damage, because we do have Thunderbolt and Ice Beam and Thunderbolt, uh, while on stab, I should be able to do something towards this Pokemon, so I felt fairly safe. And of course, with Trick Room in mind, I'm not as scared of this Pokemon. So I thought, you know what, he probably go for a water... Uh, what do you call it? Water Pulse. I go to Palmadamic, my Palm Tree, and uh, unfortunately for me, he actually goes directly for the Psychic Fangs. Which, you know, makes sense, it's a stronger hit, and it actually outcoes my Alolan Executor. Which is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I really need that. So, luckily for me, I guess you should say, I can go to Nimbus and yet again do the same play as before, going for Aqua Jet, or I mean Volt Switch, while he goes potentially for an Aqua Jet. So, yeah, of course he's not going to sack it. It brushes clearly is his main Pokemon to do damage here. I actually brings, oh snap, the, <laughs> the Ditto. So with that in mind, I actually decided to go for Dragon Pulse, because I am affected by, of course, the Trick Room, so I will be outspeeding this no matter what, so I get this play really good, potentially, because Ditto comes in and it basically dies, and that's a great perk for my side, because that means I don't have to adjust towards that Pokemon, and I am still faster. So, with this in mind, he's definitely going to bring, bring uh, the big John again, and my play here is Volt Switch. Uh, I can't risk, even Earthquake probably chaos me, and Pursuit is not going to do too much damage towards me, which is something I actually went for. As you guys will see, it does 40, and it, it's definitely not dangerous, as I'm bringing Gaius here. Um, and I was so much hoping a Trick Room would end. Sadly, I do this one turn too early, and as stated before, I was fairly sure here that I can't, or Snorlax will be able to outspeed me, and if it does, yeah, I'll lose my one win con to be able to defeat Snorlax no matter the set. So I'm bringing Porygon to her, stalling out the turn, as um, he is actually going to go directly for Return, and Return does do a fair chunk, but it's not completely out of the woods. I actually decide here to go directly for a Thunderbolt, thinking that it's very likely he would switch out, or at least so I thought. Um, and we do get the damage on the Durant, but uh, yeah, it's a two-hit possible KO. And I can't risk it, so I'm going to decide to go for a Trick Room here, trying to get some momentum going on. Because if, unless he went for Superpower, I would be able to survive this, and of course relying heavily on Hustle missing eventually. Uh, so with that said, we can actually recover stall because we know this set is banded and um, <laughs> since the damage it does too much, it's really, really, really high. Uh, so he's going to keep going from Iron Heads and I'm just basically waiting for a potential to crit or that I can fully recover myself towards this perk when I retaliate and kill it in return because I don't want to be in a spot where Aqua Jet from Bruxes do KO me. So I'm doing everything in my power to wait to that elusive miss. As we finally got it, he's going to switch out, going actually back to the big John Snorlax. Now, I was really hoping 
that I get a potential paralyzation eventually with the Thunderbolt because one thing I was feeling was that if anything I will kill this Pokemon much more reliable if it is paralyzed and basically I was thinking that this could be Figgy Berry, it actually is an Assault Vest variant but since Snorlax is so specially offensive and I don't have an investment in my special attack I felt that this could be anything so Twisted Dimension turns back to normal I'll actually decide to just keep going for Thunderbolts because like I said I wanted that paralyzation as you actually do a bit of a misprediction here go into his brushes and I get a massive opening that actually will KO the fish so we are now in a very very golden spot where basically it's whether or not Durant can KO Porygon 2 with a superpower and I felt that that's very very unlikely um, so at least fought as it goes for superpower uh, and it's a clutch, it's a 2, <laughs> two HP clutch, and we're actually able to uh, KO the Durant, which means that his only remaining Pokemon is Snorlax, and as of this moment, Snorlax can't KO my Machamp, and as I stated before, Machamp is at least what I was following the same speed here as Porygon 2, so what I basically can do is either stall it up with Porygon 2, uh, just recover and go for Thunderbolts and whatnot, or I can speed this up. What I decided to do is actually speed this up and switch into Nimbus, basically sacking it, then bring in Machamp and just wrap it up with, of course, close combat. As it goes for a turn, that is actually a KO on Nimbus, or rather, I should say, you know, considered a pursuit. I was rather, rather surprised it actually KO'd. But yes, yeah, so we go into Gauss and you basically go for that easy, easy KO with the close combat, and that will be a 2 0 in no, it, it won't. I actually kind of choked this game away. I actually had to look it up later. We are 55 base speed, not 60 as Porygon 2 is. So we actually lose this game 1 0 due to that choke because it meant that I was actually, had I gone for Crick Room, I would have been able to outspeed <laughs> that Snorlax. I'm actually slower than a Snorlax by two points. So surprisingly enough, uh, we'll lose this battle 1-0, but it was okay. I mean, I ch like I said, I choked this game away, but I, I thought the ending there was really funny. Uh, definitely one of those things that if you don't think about it, you're probably going to lose. Because um, all I really needed to do from there on out was actually go for recover and stall out any potential moves on the Snorlax. And not doing that, going for the quick wrap-up, really, really blew, blew me back. And uh, I was definitely not thinking... That Machamp actually is slower than Porygon 2, and that really is my fault. I mean, it's a massive choke, if anything. But I thought the game itself was really funny, and I hope you guys enjoy that too. Um, you know, this is this is the way of losing. I mean, it, it's a, it's a classic lose maneuver from my side. Clearly, clearly the choke of a lifetime. So to my opponent, here, Blue Rouge, thank you for course the game. I really, really was enjoying this. Even if I lost, I still felt that you know the game came down to the, the variables, and I'm having that clutch survivor with my Porygon 2. I mean, yeah, it, it was a close game no matter what and how it turned. It. So with that said, guys, thank you as always for watching, and yeah, we'll hopefully <laughs> upload another battle actually this week. So as always, guys, like I said, for watching. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.